Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The part of God's Word we will consider together this morning is our epistle lesson for today. It's from the letter of James, the fourth chapter, beginning with verse 7. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and He will lift you up. This is God's Word. Dear Christian friends, I had a friend call me once and she told me that she was in love. She thought she found the one. And I said, well, that's wonderful. Can you tell me a little bit about him? And she said, oh, he is so generous and he's so, you should see this, the things that he gives me. And I, he's, just, he's just perfect. And I said, well, when are you going to, how often do you see him? She stopped and she said, well, well I suppose, I kind of have to, don't I? You think maybe once a week would be enough? Maybe on holidays? I, well, Okay, that's a little odd. And I said, well, when, when are you going to talk to him next? And she said, well, I suppose I should. But, you know, sometimes I fall asleep. And I said, well, I'd, I'd kind of like to meet this guy. And when can I, oh, I don't think I'm ready to introduce him to anybody yet. And I thought, well, okay, uh, you know, what, well, what, when's the last time you, that, you, that you heard from him? What, what did you talk about? I don't remember. Does that sound like someone who's in love? You know, that, that guy may be in love with her, but she's definitely not in love with him. And yet how accurate of a description is that of the church and Jesus? Of our faith. He's the one. He's perfect. He's great. He gives us so many things. And we love God more than we love anything else. And, well, how much time do we spend with Him? Well, I suppose, really? How much time do we have to spend? You know, is that really true love? Fall asleep when He talks to us? Forget what He says? Not ready to introduce Him to our friends and family and neighbors? It's not really love. And in James, the entire book of James, the, 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 or at least the majority of the book of James, the, the, the topic is, what's the difference between real faith and an empty one, a dead faith? And in these verses, James talk to, talks to us about what faith is really like. The first thing that he says is, submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. And I always think about the, the description uh, in Ephesians chapter 5 where he talks about marriage. Remember the first thing he says? He says, wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. We're the bride of Christ. And he says, submit to Jesus. And here he says, submit to God and resist the devil. And yet how often, isn't that backwards? Do we actually resist God? When he says, go and make disciples. When he says, sacrifice. When he says, you know, put me first. When he says that, that we're, supposed to, we're supposed to choose righteousness over the easy way. And how often do we submit? Do we just fall back into the things that Satan wants us to do? Things I was talking to the kids about. The laziness and the selfishness. And, you know, the, the things that, that the, the, the lying and the dishonesty. And all those things that Satan just adores. How often do we fall into that? And find it difficult to walk with God. Are we excited about walking with God? Do we trust Him? When we submit, we're saying, I trust you more than I trust me. When we resist, we're saying, I don't really trust you to know what's best for me. I think I'm going to go my own way just for a little while and then maybe later... I'll submit, if I feel like it. What a wonderful thing it is that we have a Savior who did 
submit. You know, during Lent, we look at all the things that Jesus did, and he submitted to his Father every single day of his life. He resisted the devil perfectly. Even though Satan brought his A game, even though he brought the big guns, even though he brought everything he had, Jesus resisted. Because we can't. And he submitted, even when it cost him. Even when it cost him his popularity. He stuck with his Father's will. Even when it cost him his friends, and they abandoned him in the garden. Even when it cost him his reputation and his health and, yeah, his life. Jesus is the perfect Savior. And our goal is to get a little bit more like him because of what he has done for us. I want to be a little more like him each day. And so he tells us there's, there are three things about the commitment that we want to look at. First of all, come near to God and he'll come near to you. What do we make time for? You know, we make time for our recreation. We make time to go fishing. We make time to watch TV. We make time for, I don't know, your nap, going out to eat. Whatever it is you make time for, those are the things that you love. Those are the things that you plan to do. God says, come near to me, and I'll come near to you. How often do we say there are days that God seems so far away? And he's right there. The problem, almost exclusively, is that we're facing the wrong direction. We're not looking into his will, we're looking into ours. We're not seeking him in the word. We're seeking our own agenda. We're not praying to him. We may be speaking words, but we're not talking to him. And when we come to church, do we worship or do we just make sure we're standing at the right time, sitting at the right time, saying the right words? Sometimes maybe not even aware that God is here and that He loves us and He wants us to come to Him. And look at the promise. He will come near to you. And then He says, wash your hands, you sinners. You know, repent. When we talk about repentance, what kind of things do we actually get rid of in our lives? You know, we, we, we're familiar with sin because, you know, we grew up with it and it's, it comes naturally to us. But what do we do? What do we actually cleanse from our lives? What do we get rid of? You know, if the TV's a problem, do we put it away? If laziness is a problem, do we ask for help? Do we change? You know, I think about the fictitious man that I was talking about in the beginning, you know, where this, this woman was de deeply in love with him. Just imagine how much he must love her to put up with that kind of behavior. And that's what we want to think about during Lent. How much does Jesus love us to put up with ours? And so he says, purify your hearts you double-minded. This is actually a reference to adultery. When you're attached to two people, when you're only supposed to be attached to one. Jesus, of course, talked about that when he said you cannot serve both God and money. There are uh, consistent, or, or there are multiple uh, illustrations of that in the Old Testament. Uh, Isaiah talks about it. Jeremiah talks about it. Hosea, the, almost the entire book, talks about it, where he says... Jerusalem, Israel is supposed to be my bride, but they're unfaithful to me. The Old Testament lesson in, uh, for today. Once again, the Israel, Israel followed the idols. Once again, Israel became indistinguishable, indistinguishable from the people around them. They did the same things, went the same places, had the same priorities. Because they weren't serving God. And once again, God came to save him. 
And so James says, when we love God with a living faith, that double allegiance will disappear. We don't want to be attached to the sinful things of this world. We don't want to be attached to our own agenda anymore. We just want to be with God because we love Him. And this next one, grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Now, it's not talking about you know, Christians have to be sad and Christians have to be, uh, have to be in anguish and we, we just have to feel guilty. But what does make you cry? Does sin make you cry? Does the thought of a friend or someone in your family separated from Jesus, walking in the wrong direction, Does that make you feel bad? Or are we so comfortable with sin? We have no trouble watching it on TV, have no trouble reading it in books, have no trouble seeing it in our friends. We're not going to say anything because it doesn't really bother us anymore. We don't see it for the poison that it is. And we underestimate the purity of the love of God that's available. So he says, grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and joy to gloom. What offends us? Consider when Jesus went into the temple. I mean, they were doing the same things they always did. I mean, people came from long distances, so they they provided sacrifices for them. And yeah, they were making a living. They had to make a profit on this stuff. I mean, why not here? These people, they had a corner on the market. Isn't that just good business to make money off the people that are coming to the temple? Did that offend Jesus? You suppose people could tell? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. He turned over the tables of the money changers. He chased them out of there and he said, get out of my father's house. This is supposed to be a house of prayer. You've made it a den of robbers. What offends us? To the point we want it out of our house, out of our life, where we will not tolerate it anymore. What makes us grieve? and mourn, and wail. So humble yourselves before the Lord, and He will lift you up. When we talk about contentment, when we talk about a faith that trusts God, when someone is in love, what do they want to do with the person they're in love with. Anything. It doesn't matter. They just want to be there with them. They'll sit and watch paint dry. They'll make up reasons. They'll make up excuses to go see them. They just want to be with them. That's what faith does. We just want to be with God. Does it really matter what we're doing together? No. I just want to be with Him. Now, unfortunately, my love is not perfect, and there are times I don't feel that way. And those are the times that we celebrate that His love is. And He always feels that way about us. You think about the garbage he has to wade through to get to us sometimes. You think about the language he has to put up with, the attitudes, the emotions, the amount of time we ignore him, and he still wants to be with us. He loves us that much. He showed us that with his life, with his death, with his resurrection. He shows us that every day today. When we ask for forgiveness, it's there. 
When we pray, he's listening and he answers. And his love never fails. And he will lift us up. Humble yourselves before the Lord. Submit then to God. Resist the devil. Come near to God. Wash your hands. Purify your hearts. Grieve over sin. And he will lift you up. Amen. And the peace of God that transcends all understanding will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.